today in Data Center Interconnect and in other um, uh, long reach type scenarios, a PAM4 DWDM product is, uh, is you know, has up until you know, last year, it's definitely picked up a lot, a lot of momentum. And this is a two by 50 gig DWDM uh, PAM4 module. So it fits in a QSFP28 form factor, which um, is a much cheaper, right, um, per port. Um, technology than the CFP2 DCO. It's got a couple of um, a couple of cons in the marketplace. Is one there's there's competing standards between the, the different providers of this technology. So you've got some providers who offer um, two 50 gig wavelengths, um, kind of multiple mucks together as they come out of the transceiver. That then must go through a um, you know limit some of the mux options that customers can offer. Okay. And then there's also a um, two by 50 gig that uh, does transmit over um, two pairs of two different pairs of fibers. So therefore it uses two MUX ports. But the industry, that, industry standard gridded MUX is then. Right, right. Industry standard 100 gigahertz MUX. And so that's, um, you know, that those are some of the, the trade-offs there. I think in both instances, though, one of the big things is the upfront cost for customers because they need to provide their own amplification and dispersion compensation for them to go even 40 kilometers, let alone 80 kilometers. So that's, um, you know, it's not clean, right? It's not as clean as say a CP2 DCO might be, but depending upon what your, what your application may be, if you're just going a couple of um, only one or two links, you're like, yeah, that's not, you know, probably not there, but if you're going more than two links, it probably the, the you know, the ROI might be there on those particular technologies. And Ray, aren't, aren't there some, you know, complications in terms of operational complexity? So creating that open line system with amplification requires the ability to engineer the link in terms of uh, calculating the dispersion characteristics and, and loss of the link and then per channel power balancing uh, in a fairly manual environment. So if you rewind DWDM systems as we think of them today, rewind them 10 years or 15 years, all of that manual intervention is, is still pretty prevalent then in the open line system, correct? Absolutely. In open line systems, you know, you can, to your point, you know, you can do it yourself. Why DIY, build up your whole link, calculate all your calculations up to getting everything auto magically done for you, right? And the amount you pay, is commiserate, right, with your effort that goes into it. So that's one thing for operators, you know, you can go from, you know, per, you know from a very paltry, you know, you know, four, five, six, you know, less than 10 grand up to you know, 35, 40 grand to have all these different things part, put together. So there's a, there's a, um, or higher, right? Um, so there's a, a large range of costs and complexity that goes into that, that, you know, everyone needs to keep in, keep in mind. And, um, and for that reason, you know, you know, we've kind of seen in the market that technology's kind of hit its head a little bit in terms of its um, its applicability. Just because if you're looking at you know high density or higher density, anyway, you know it, it might work out. Um, if you're looking at so, low density, it's not a great value prop right now from what we can see. That first that first link is very very expensive, and then yes. if you kind of think of it over over twenty forty or or more hundred gig links, the amortized cost of that barrier of entry is is much lower. So so unlike the CFP two DCO, where the first link um, really doesn't cost more than the DCO modules, the PAM four link has a has an initial infrastructure build that that's absolutely required to make even one, one circuit operate. But you get some flexibility. Um, and these open line systems are generally point to point only. So they're not intended for complicated ring or, or optical ad drop sites along a path. They're, they're generally point A to point B um, and then regenerated with another point A to point B as it, as it moves along you know, a, a traffic. So, so unlike a, a DWDM line system, the, the ability to what, what we would refer to as expressed through a site uh, gets even more complicated because you have no power balancing, you know, functionality. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, that's a great point. To, so it's an interesting, you know, interesting uh, uh, technology. I, I like the fact that it's a QSFP 28. So I think, you know, unlike that, that CFP two slot, um, there are very few, if any hundred gig platforms on the marketplace that, 
that don't support QSFP 28 at this point. So it's absolutely the commodity slot in terms of, of uh, um, selection in the OEM, you know, manufacturer um, platforms. Any, any thoughts on, on, you know, PAM4 beyond, you know, the, the bifurcated supply chain and technology is, is extremely complicated. So you mentioned the, the dual lambda on dual fiber and the dual lambda on single fiber and the, the muxing issues. Yeah, I think you know, one thing we're seeing, you know, in the 100 gig world is the, the single lambda. That is a becoming a reality in our, in our gray optics world. So, you know, it's just a matter of time before it catches up here in the DWDM world. And probably the biggest problem, right, market problem that needs to be solved with this is the amount of power required by the module. So, um, you know, the PAM4 modules today use somewhere in the neighborhood of six and a half watts or you know, six to six and a half watts. And so that's, that's a lot of power for a regular QSFP 28 port to support. So the new, um, so these sorts of new um, uh, technologies are going to have to reduce power. And so to do that, power and thermal. Yeah, thermal. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, so I know some new DSPs coming into the market are going to be smaller, going to use less power that will support, um, you know, single Lambda, 100, 100 gig uh, DWDM. I suspect that here over the next year um, to 18 months, you know, we'll see some real developments in that area where I think that technology is going to be a lot more accessible. 